Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's fundamental and technical forex and gold supply and demand analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning and equally warm welcome to you and if you want to support the channel and get the quality content out there um, and help support it then uh, please don't forget to like subscribe and uh, share with your tr fellow trading colleagues so the trading 180 process um, is really to apply fundamental uh, analysis uh, to establish our directional bias and then apply technical analysis supply and demand strategies to time our trade entries, risk management, and establish profit targets. So we use the best of both worlds to take the best uh, trades. So let's get into the week ahead in the calendar and um, looking at trading economics the week ahead, saying that it was gonna be a busy week with the US Federal Reserve Monetary Policy Meeting and Jobs Report taking center stage. Also, attention will be given to corporate results of the dismal earnings from Amazon. Not really too concerned about that. Elsewhere, the Bank of England and Reserve Bank of Australia will be deciding on interest rates. And uh, I guess I'll go into some of the um, uh, nitty gritty, I guess. Uh, so in the US, the Fed is expected to to deliver a half point rate hike on Wednesday, which would be the first such move since 2000, the year 2000, uh, 22 years ago, and to uh, confirm plans to begin shrinking its nine trillion asset portfolio by 95 billion a month in June. Investors will watch for clues on the rate hike trajectory, and that's really important, um, to curb price pressures that are at a four decade high. Meanwhile, pressures, sorry, markets uh, see non farm payrolls increasing by 380,000, the least in a year, but still pointing to strong hiring momentum, while unemployment rate is seen falling to 3.5%, matching February's 2020 pre pandemic rate. So there's that going on. Elsewhere in America, key data to follow include. Canada employment figures, trade balance, um, and then we've got Mexico, Brazil, the Central Bank of Brazil, not too concerned about that. In the United Kingdom, the Bank of England is expected to hike rates for the fourth straight meeting by 25 basis points to 1% as inflation hit a 30 year high, although some officials are concerned about the growth outlook, and that's very actually very important, as cost of living pressures mount. Also important data, uh, follow include Bank of England's monetary indicators. So let's see elsewhere in Europe. Uh, retail trade in the euro area is forecast to be unchanged from a month earlier in March, but Germany sales are set to increase for the second month while industrial production is expected to fall for the first time in six months as factory orders continue to drop. And that's obviously important for the uh, the growth of the economy, right? So the uh, unemployment rate probably hit a fresh record low on the bloc's economy while Germany, while in Germany, it was steady at pre-pandemic lows. So they've got some positive data, a little bit of positive data out of uh, out of Europe and Germany, Germany being Europe's powerhouse. But other data to follow include Eurozone business climate, producer prices, um, and then you've got the central bank in Norway and the Czech. Um, investors also follow the OPEC meeting on Thursday. So they are uh, expected to stick to planned output increase. Okay, so that should potentially support uh, commodity prices, even though EU moves closer to joining the US and the UK and imposing a ban on Russia. Crude imports, right? Uh, in Australia, this is obviously going to be important as well. The Reserve Bank of Australia will likely increase borrowing costs by 25 basis points, so hike interest rates uh, after first quarter inflation rate hit a two decade high of 5.1 and the labor market remained historically tight. So, folk, uh, focus on sorry, will also be given to the RBA's forward guidance, which is seen uh, being brought forward so that the benchmark interest rate reaches 1.25% at the end of 2022. So pretty much all central banks um, at the moment, or the major central banks, probably apart from the Bank of Japan and the Bank, uh, the Swiss National Bank are uh, are hiking rates at the moment. So um, yeah, we've got some, uh, or looking to hike rates at some point. So uh, um, yeah, some, some positivity and really, how you kind of trade this is is by understanding who's hiking more and first versus who is lagging behind. So at the moment, for me, the Australian dollar is um, is a buy. 
Um, the US dollar is still a buy, even though, you know, we're waiting for uh, pullbacks on some of the pairs. The Canadian dollar, for example, is a buy. New Zealand dollar is a buy. And, uh, and the rest are pretty much uh, uh, sells. The pound is a bit of a unique one, uh, but we'll get into that as we get into the charts. So let's get into the charts and starting off as we always do on the dollar index. Now, on the dollar index, um, this is some of last week's analysis. It's looking for really a pullback on this um, uh, on the on the on the dollar index as far as it being um, a, a measure of a dollar strength. So um, looking to buy the dollar, you were really kind of looking for you know some sort of pullback, but prices just kept going higher, right? So um, not to say that we were going to buy the, the any the, the dollar index because we would really buy um, the dollar yen, dollar Swiss, for example, but. Um, but yeah, prices just kept going higher, and this is what happens when you have, um, I guess, strong monetary policy when the uh, dollar is leading the pack. But we did get some interesting news um, last week, and that was that um, there was U.S. stagflation fears on the rise, right? So there was a surprise GDP contraction at the time, um, at a time when inflation is running at forty-year highs, will inevitably lead to more talk of stagflation, particularly with the Fed set to hike interest rates aggressively. However, major trade uh, and inventory swings mask decent underlying domestic demand with Q uh, second quarter activity set to be much better. So although the headline number um, end up being very disappointing, very, very disappointing, um, the, the, the market is pretty much looking past it. They're actually, because you think about it, you know, the, the, it, I think it had probably been, I wouldn't say priced in, but it had, it was definitely a surprise, but I think the market were like, well, maybe it was just a bit of a blip, right? And again, looking at, you know, whether, whether it's the beginning of a contraction trend, right? And going to lead to a potential recession or whether it is just, uh, um, uh, just, a, 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 a bit of a blip, right? So, um, you know, GDP falls, but derails, D, sorry, details offer reasons for optimism. And again, the second quarter growth should rebound. So the market is, um, you know, factoring in actually the second quarter should just, you know, this should be basically like a pullback, uh, these numbers. And the uh, Fed is, like, is still set to hike by 50 basis points in May. So it hasn't derailed the, um, the Fed's hiking. It's still hiking aggressively, so you know you can see GDP levels versus pre-COVID trend. And although this was a bit of a pullback in the future, we still have potential growth. So the market has looked past it, hence the reason why you're seeing, I guess, on the um, on the DXY, you're seeing uh, the dollar index, uh, you know, strengthen where a lot of traders would have been getting short on that on that news and um in the group i did say uh to the to the guys that um i was looking to just wait and see and in fact let me see if i can find that conversation yeah so here was uh the 28th thursday 28th of of, of uh of april and um i was talking about uh, talking to some of the guys and here were some of the comments um you know about buying gold for example again not financial advice but um you know when the, uh, the the stagflation narrative you know came out i was saying that you know um this uh, another negative quarter would obviously put the us in a technical recession which would then mean all bets of a rate hike are out the window but let's see how the story develops yeah so a lot of traders would generally start to jump in on bad news um, based off of, um, you know, just uh, going to Forex factory and saying sell or buy. And, you know, uh, trading 180, we don't trade like that. That's how everyone else trades, right? We don't trade like that. Um, and, uh, you know, we made obviously smart decisions not to uh, just get involved emotionally and looking at the headline figures um, because there would have been a lot of traders selling that dollar. And then you can see they would have been caught on the wrong side of the market. And as I said, then it could be a blip, a massive one, but still temporary, right? So I, I did, you know, kind of warn and I was saying to kind of hold fire with uh, with the guys and not to, uh, you know, get involved in that trade just yet. And obviously you could see what ended up happening uh, uh, technically, you know, prices end up going higher, obviously. 
Um, and uh, but obviously they, they can still come down, and I'm hoping that it does because I'm still a buyer really of the dollar um, in many ways and gold. Um, but I really want a deeper pullback on the dollar. Um, so let's see what happens. So um, so yeah, the dollar not not great. Um, but uh, let's see what happens, you know, with the economy and what the uh, the market is already priced in. So I do think that the dollar is definitely due a pullback. It is, you know, very expensive at the moment. So any pullbacks to um, any kind of demand zones, as confluence on the DXY, is you know what I really want to get involved in. So let's see what happens there. Uh, moving on to the dollar yen. That dollar yen just hasn't pulled back, has it? Look at that, crazy. But Let's see, there is a demand zone there, probably the first demand zone that I probably may look to get involved in here because in fact the upside from there was around about 431 pips. So prices, you know, prices pulled back, that's a decent pullback uh, for me to that zone into that 127 round number, 128, somewhere around there and see what potentially could happen um, in that zone um, uh, yeah so I, I do think that the again the dollar is quite expensive so if that that zone does fail um, then again I'd have to probably overweight for a demand zone to be produced or if prices can come down to that one two two one two one area then that would be an absolute you know great buy I think a buying opportunity on that dollar um, dollar yen definitely not buying the uh, the yen although there is risk off concerns the market seems to be a bit more focused on the fundamentals rather than putting their money into safe haven assets uh, moving on to the Swiss dollar Swiss and um, again looking at the dollar uh, saying I uh, saying this last week that you know why even though you can get supply zones um, if you're trading against really the uh, the fundamental analysis then you're probably going to end up getting caught just going short for no reason or just for technical reasons is the reason why a lot of traders end up getting you know uh, losing trades right personally as you can see from last week I was looking for a pullback to try and get long of course no one can predict the future we have to wait for you know prices to come down obviously prices went to the upside and we have to just wait for a pullback to get in at a better price right so um, unfortunately prices haven't come down to get in, back involved in this uh, in this trend but uh, if they do then that for me is going to be a decent buy if you do want to be a buyer of the Swiss franc for whatever reason but fundamentally um, I say fundamentally probably more to do with maybe uh, the, the dollar um, you know being a bit uh, uh, expensive and probably some sort of profit taken then um, I would personally you know I wouldn't rely on a on a level you know a zone that was uh, back you know 20 years ago 20 years ago sorry 2020 uh, May 2020 not 20 years ago um, I wouldn't necessarily rely on any kind of zones that were two years old I would rather um, for price to prove that there is supply there and then a pull back into that zone before looking to get short if that was the play of course and but it's not for me so um moving on to the dollar cad dollar cad is a very interesting one um i am looking potentially i shouldn't really delete that i am potentially looking at a trade but it's further up at the highs it's around here so I do think that there is a scope for a potential downside around that area here. So um, currently not too interested, but if it does come up above that to around that one thirty cent, uh, one yeah, one dollar thirty um, area, then I probably may look for a short trade um, in that in that zone uh, to get short and buy the Canadian dollar. Um, you do have, in fact, this was a it was hidden demand right here. Uh, so there was an opportunity to get involved in that uh, last week when prices came down into that zone and it went to the upside. Um, but if we do get again prices come up into this area here, I'm very interested in that. Um, you've got two central banks that are looking to high crates, um, which should lead to what is known as a as a value auction. To be fair, um, prices, even though in, if you if you zoom out on a on a daily time frame chart, you can see where prices have been in this uh, what 
people would describe as a bit of a range but it's actually an auction between the 129 and the 124 so I do think the highs around here are decent for a potential uh, short trade um, and again uh, the guys in the group will probably get a bit more analysis on that was well, it probably but they definitely will but for, for YouTube just know that you know this for, for me this is a decent area to look for uh, short trades and I'll um, and uh, there are several reasons why which I'm not going to get into in this uh, video it's free video um, dollar New Zealand dollar US dollar so uh, New Zealand dollar did sell off um, the, the US dollar generally does typically strengthen in a risk um, in, in risk off environments or you know when there's global turmoil and uh, the, the, the commodity currencies like the uh, New Zealand dollar won't necessarily stand a chance so what you've seen is um, really a, a strong sell-off um, and uh, there was no there was just no demand at those areas right uh, so zooming out again I'd probably say for me there's levels but nothing really interesting um to get uh, to get long on i'd probably wait for proof if i was looking to trade this pair which i'm not proof of demand and then pull back into that zone whether you want to call it a double bottom um I, i'm not even really inclined to call it that there's there's certain setups that we use in trading 180 technical setups to um to determine whether there's a strong demand or strong supply so um once I see that type of setup, or once I, if I did see that type of setup, that's where I would be interested in going long technically. But fundamentally, this pair doesn't really interest me. But if you are interested in continuing, you know, the, the short trades here really is where um, your first opportunity is to get uh, short and continue buying the uh, the dollar if you haven't taken profit already. Uh, moving on to the do pound dollar, pound dollar. So the pound, um, I was saying last week, you can see the analysis. Uh, last week that I was looking for a pullback into that supply zone and for prices to go to the downside which they did but they just didn't pull back right to that area I was looking at that thinking yep I do want to get involved in that but uh, unfortunately there was none again so uh, strong trends just really strong trends this year has been a a year for uh, for really um, uh, volatile uh, 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 price movements if you consider the pound <coughs> sorry consider the pound dollar has moved currencies generally move in a year probably around an average of maybe about seven maybe five to maybe eight percent and I think so far we've moved around yeah something like nine percent um, so that's definitely above the average so from basically the high of 2022 to the low of 2022 we've moved like nine percent which is again uh, quite a uh, quite a move in in comparison probably the pound dollar there moved around seven percent from 20 the lows of uh, highs of 2021 to 20 lows of 2021 yeah about seven about seven eight percent um so we've definitely moved you know a, a, a quite a large amount over the over a short space of time I and mean, we still got another you know six months uh, seven months to go so um for me anyways pullbacks uh, into zones that 130 area is going to be a very nice zone looking at any kind of long trades again i'm not keen on on using uh 2020 um areas uh, to look for buy trades i'm not looking to buy this anyway um probably still looking to sell it but again, looking at um, where we are from a fundamental perspective, you've got rates and effects are waking up to a less hawkish Bank of England reality. So the markets are expecting too much tightening from the Bank of England and are slowly waking up to a less hawkish reality. And I've, I've been saying this for um, a good maybe month or so uh, that I was looking to short the uh, pound and you can see uh, what's happened with the pound against various currencies this means gilts will struggle to follow treasury and bond yields higher and the curve should price out hikes so sterling has started to react to the weaker consumer demand and barring a very hawkish surprise uh, risks look skewed to the downside so again um you know this wasn't hard to see um 
you know, again, we're using the fundamentals to predict, you know, medium to long term trends. And that's what, you know, we consistently do at Trading 180. And you can see that also as well. Recession risks sparks UK market jitters ahead of Bank of England decisions. So retail stocks, the pound and sterling junk bonds have all slid. Money market bets, uh, money markets bet the Bank of England will have to pivot to, to rate cuts, basically meaning... Um, that they might not hike as much as they uh, were signaling uh, maybe about a month or two ago, uh, which then causes a revaluation of the pound. So the UK markets are sounding the alarm of a potential recession, piling pressure on the Bank of England to balance curbing, uh, balance curbing surging inflation what, with protecting growth. So that's what's known again as stagflation. So with that being said, um, any pullbacks for me, um, on this are, are definitely selling opportunities. Moving on to the euro dollar. Again, euro dollar continued to sell off. Uh, we got in up here and took profit round here and um, was looking for maybe a deeper pullback, but it just didn't come. So it is what it is again, but there's opportunities, always opportunities to, uh, to buy. Again, another strong trend to the downside, a pullback to that zone for me is definitely a, uh, uh, or say, I say definitely, but it's a, for me, it's a nice opportunity to get um, short again, continued shorts. Um, although the euro at some point, uh, we were debating in the room, in the Discord group, whether the euro or when the euro is going to be a buy. And uh, I think there is obviously a pullback is due uh, at some point, but I do think that um, I think that the, the euro is going to be a buy when we see some economic growth and uh, talking about the eurozone. So again, also a recession threat hangs over Europe's fragile economic growth. So it's not looking good in Europe either, right? So um, growth of 0.2% in, uh, in the first quarter was less than expected. Economy is vulnerable to fallout from the Ukraine war. So geographically, where they are, uh, they're, being the, they're being really you know affected by... Uh, the, um, the Russia-Ukraine war. So Eurozone recovery from the pandemic is already showing signs of flagging even before it meets the economic storm clouds heading its ways. The danger of a recession loomed into view this week after Russia halted gas flows to Poland and Bulgaria, offering a foretaste of what the region might have in store. But even without energy rationing, such a move might provoke the outlook um, looks ominous underscored by weaker than expected growth reported Friday so economic growth not doing too well and so uh, that's prompting that the ECB rate hike possible but not likely in July yeah so European Central Bank uh, rate increase in July is possible but not likely says Vice President Luis de uh, Guindos said so there's you know there's uh, no reason why and an end to net Asset purchases shouldn't happen in July, uh, uh, Guindos told uh, the Spanish newspaper in an interview published on Sunday, but rates will rise after that and may happen within months, weeks or days. July is possible, but that's not to say it's likely. And uh, this is the re really the reason why. So with that being said, if you go back to, you know, the euro, think um, it's probably a pullback due on a daily of course and but I think that there, there are some definite opportunities to get short within that zone if not the higher probability is going to be up at the highs uh, Aussie dollar um, again there was no demand there right the commodity currencies weren't aren't doing great but prices have come down into a bit of a zone here and there's one just above it now with the Australian dollar and the RBA looking to high crates, I think prices have come down to a decent zone to look for potential buys. Um, I don't know about against the dollar, but technically it's decent. Um, you also have uh, you also have supplies and sitting right on top of that demand zone right there. So um, if you do want to continue to get short and sell the uh, the Australian dollar. Um, then that's really the zone. Then you've got a decent demand zone. In fact, I'll probably pull that down to maybe there. Yeah, um, decent demand, but I think the, probably the better area would be down at that 70 cent area, uh, 70 cent demand zone. Personally, I'm not really interested in this currency pair. Uh, the Aussie yen, Aussie yen um, came down into this decent zone. A nice 
pullback entry before potentially moving higher if the Australian uh, dollar, the RBA, start to hike rates. I think it's probably been priced in for now, but uh, any pullbacks into this zone and possibly a potential stop hunt below there was, is going to be nice. If price pull back to that 85 area, I think that's going to be absolutely lovely to a great zone to buy. Um, to buy or just above that, that would be a uh, is known as a CPR, the 86 area. Um, uh, for the guys that know what uh, capture pain relief is, so um, yeah, I think again, the Australian dollar is still a buy, it's just where you want to buy. Um, and gold, 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 gold. So, gold, um, again, a bit of a mixed bag. I do think gold is a buy overall, but with the dollar strengthening for now and in the next couple of weeks, it puts pressure on gold. But I do think later on this year, with inflation still rising, I do think gold is a is a is a continued buy. And um, there is uh, where is it now? So it's right. Where is it now? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where did I put the gold? Where did I put that gold um, article? Here it is. So uh, Bloomberg uh, WGC gold remains resilient amid heightened uncertainties. The gold generally does well in a risk off environment. So World Gold Council CEO APAC ex China. Um, Andrew Naylor says global says global gold demand excluding over the counter OTC in the first quarter rose 34% on year thanks to strong ETF flows. He speaks with Yvonne, etc. So there's you know there's a definitely interest in buying gold um, uh, to protect obviously against inflation. So I do think that there is a, a, an opportunity and opportunities to buy gold, especially as it comes down deeper into these zones for a nice potential upside. So um, we have that again. I think uh, the uh, if if the dollar start does start to weaken, and then it you know growth starts does start to you know stagnate and potentially not grow as much as um, in the second quarter, then I think gold is definitely going to um, say definitely, but it's likely to. Uh, go higher and probably reach the uh, the highs, the all-time highs again, and even beyond that, right? Because there are forecasts projecting that. Anyways, uh, that brings us to the end of this week's video. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, support the channel, and I um, hope you have a great trading week. Take care.